I'd like to tell you how Severna Park got here. Uh, there was a land grant about 1680 uh, to Christopher Randall for a big piece of property, about 2,600 acres that ran from the Severn River to the Magathy and from Shipley's Choice down to um, Joyce Lane. Over the years, the first 100 or 200 years, it got broken up into smaller pieces. And a young lawyer from Baltimore, 27 years old, his name was Oscar Hatton, had some interest in it. So he got on the old WBNA train, which was really not a train, but more of a uh, trolley that uh, kind of was a little bit rickety coming down. Stopped at the Boone Station, because that was what the name of it was at the time, and got off. They had like a little shed there, so, you know, to keep people dry while, while they were waiting for the train. And he looked all around, and actually it's all farmland. There's just rolling hills. There's hardly any trees. There's hardly anything. He did uh, laid it all out. He put in his own water system, his own electrical system, and his own phone system. This were all big draws for people coming down to the high class community. Um, so the community was kind of growing. It had a railroad station. It had uh, a couple of stores. It had a school. There were little roads going down to the river. They had their own private beach. Uh, for everybody to use in the community, and it kept, kept growing. Severna Park is still in big demand right now. The story we're about to tell you took place in November of 1942 during World War II on the Magathy River. Dr. Looper had designed a 38-foot mahogany sloop that uh, he kept at, uh, at Broad Creek. The, the sloop had been built in the early 1940s in Crisfield, Maryland. Dr. Looper was very proud of this boat and took out friends and family into the Magathy River and as well as the, uh, the Chesapeake Bay and even to Annapolis. And as they sailed back, they realized that there was a nor'easter. The wind was blowing very strongly and the boat was healing quite a bit. As they entered the channel to Broad Creek, they were going past Rock Bar Point. Suddenly, a very strong wind pushed them onto Rock Bar Point, and they were aground. As much as they tried to maneuver, they were not able to dislodge the boat. They realized that they were going to have to spend the night on the boat with no hot dinner and no warm clothing. They were not prepared at all. They went down below into the cabin and closed the door. And they found that there were some bottles of water, there were a couple of cans of sardines, as well as a can of green peas. And that was their cold dinner for the evening. But again, it was getting colder and they had no blankets, so they used the sails that they took down from the boat and used those as blankets. They were so tired, they fell asleep. In the morning, they were rudely awakened by somebody pounding on the hull. My family started in, on the Magathy in 1910. Rumor is that the lumber for the house came down by boat and uh, came up the cove, which was very deep, and that's how they, what they built the house on. Now, when my father was an engineer, and when he designed a house, he was always very practical on it. It was a two-story house, again, four bedrooms. He said if he had one more child, he would need two bedrooms, one for the child and one for the psychiatrist. But uh, we didn't go that far, but he had porches on both the front and the back that were two-story porches so that he could leave a window open in every room unless it was a hurricane without rain coming in. In those days, even when you we built a house, we didn't have central air conditioning, but you didn't need it with the breeze on the river. The life on the Magathy as a kid uh, was a little different because we did not go to school. We were Baltimoreans and would come down from Baltimore on weekends and all during the summer. 